back to the second edition. We're just in time for spooky season. There's some pretty haunted places around Dark City. I heard there are some haunted places around campus as well. Macy and Cody took a visit down to Ireland Hall to talk about past events that have taken place there. There's nothing creepy here than the stories told at Ireland Hall. I had a chance to sit down with Frank Owens and he told me about his experiences. But I could hear voices upstairs coming through that door. So I called up and nobody answered. So I got on the phone and I called a few people on campus to see if there was anything going on. And everybody said no, nobody had been up there for about three weeks. So I went up to check and there's an auditorium upstairs, an old, old auditorium. And it sounded like two distinct different voices, like there was conversation style going back and forth. One would stop and the other would pick up, you know, like if you and I were talking. And it was definitely rooted in one place. I was running a class in our classroom. And again, it's criminal justice, so we talk a lot of, about things that are sensitive in nature. So a lot of times when we do that, I'll shut the classroom door just in case so nobody walks through and overhears something that they shouldn't or whatever. And, I had just shut the door, turned around, and I had reinitiated my lecture when the the door handle just violently, I say violently, like it was not just a little shake, it was moving up and down. And I thought a student had been locked out, so I opened the door and there was nobody out there. Third level, and there's a door to that goes into that third level, uh, and it was open, so I thought maybe they were having some work done. So. Like that door up that I told you about that goes up to the third floor. In, how do I say this? Uh, unofficially, in our class, in our session, we refer to it as, we, we started calling it the demon door. Because he said, made a comment about, do you know the guy standing next to me? And he played it back and you heard a voice say, Frank. And I'd never given him my name. And uh, so I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. And then at one point, he says, well, I sense you're agitated. Uh, and he played it back, and you heard a voice say, get out. That when this was a school, this was the old Art City High School, that one of the principals had died here. But it doesn't explain for a lot of our activity. If you have any spooky encounters you would like to share, be sure and tag us at our yeah. social media. Well, I actually heard the Ireland Hall has a third floor, but it's dangerous to people who get sick from all the dust. Definitely. It's best to be cautious, especially with flu season right around the corner. It's getting closer to the winter season, and all this talk about COVID has made us forget about a common viral infection spread every year, the flu. I sat down with Alexander Faust and Jamie Harrington to talk about the flu and how you can help prevent yourself and others from getting sick. My name is Jamie Harrington, and I'm a family nurse practitioner. My name is Alex Faust. I am a phlebotomist for the American Red Cross, and I am a first semester nursing student. So the flu is a respiratory, respiratory virus. virus. Respiratory, mouth, nose, airways, lung tissue. Caused by the influenza virus and it can be spread by respiratory droplets like sneezes, coughs. Touching or sharing drinks or food, kissing or by any type of contact precautions. Probably one of the most dominant causes that the flu is spread is through not washing your hands, touching other people or coughing or sneezing in close contact with other people. Unfortunately for the flu virus, it can survive on surfaces, so not only that, any surface that those droplets and other materials land on. The people that do get the flu vaccine are protected more than those that do not get the vaccine. I think the number of cases of the flu has gone down significantly because of a, another more prominent pandemic that is unfortunately much more infectious than the flu. We are taking precautions with COVID-19 and wearing a mask, hand washing, and social distancing, which makes a difference in the flu because it's spread very similarly. The most important things you can do to help prevent spreading the flu are hand and washing, washing, wearing a mask. Wearing a mask is mostly for stopping you from infecting others instead of stopping the infection from coming to you. And then just continuing things that you would do with the COVID-19 pandemic like social, social distancing, distancing, cover yourself when you cough, wear a mask, staying home, things like that. Having the flu is no fun, so make sure to wash your hands and if you're not feeling good, stay home. Those are some great tips on how to stay safe with the flu. Yeah, no one would want to get sick with alcohol when you just around the corner. Taylor sat down with one of the former queens, Shannon O'Toole, and the Queen of Lala candidates to get to know them a bit better. With alcohol around the corner, we sat down with the former Queen of Lala and the 89th Annual Court to talk about the good times with the upcoming Fall Festival. 
I would describe Arkawala as a big homecoming for the town, the community of Ark City, where our community comes together to celebrate all that's good with, with Ark City. The streets will be lined with people and families um, and everyone just wanting to have a good time. Um, Arkawala was started many, many years ago just as, as a way to, to kind of celebrate, you know, everything that's good about Ark City. My first stop in the food booth circuit at Arkalala is always chicken and noodles. Um, and then I always, um, then um, the evening of the night parade, I um, follow that up with a pork burger. Um, love pork burgers, they're really good. And then if I had to move over to the dessert and sweets category, I would probably say a funnel cake or caramel apple or I think um, any Arcola, of... I eat quite a bit of Arkalala but I'd have to say my favorite out of any of them would have to be chocolate covered cheesecake on a stick. Chicken noodles, pork burgers, and the roasted corn. They're chocolate covered cheesecake, their funnel cake, and the roasted corn. I think I would do caramel apple, pork burgers, and maybe or chocolate burger. I would probably tell them to just do what you want to do, and if you have any goals, to just strive for them and work as hard as you can. Be sure to enjoy the carnival of food and the good atmosphere. Will you be at Arcalala this year? That was good. I sure am going. What about you, Emma? Me too. Speaking of recent events, Annie and Tiffany went to have a look at Art in the Park this past Saturday. Art has been a big deal at Cali, especially Art in the Park. This is an annual event in Winfield, Kansas. I talked to Mark Flickinger, Mark Dykes, and the Art Club president about this event. Uh, Art in the Park is something held in Winfield every year where they let community artists uh, sell some of the things they've made over the last year. Art in the Park has been going for uh, like 30 years, probably longer than that. It's been going a long time. And artists come and sell their wares. And there's food and pottery, crafts, stuff like that. This is my first year helping out with Art in the Park. Um, last year I didn't actually volunteer, but I just helped like make the signs and load up, but I was actually there. Where anybody can participate in it as long as they contact them and get a booth reserve. Uh, as far as how early that needs to be, I'm not sure. We usually get contact if they reach out to us. Uh, the community, yeah. Uh, it's open to artists, I think. You have people from all over, uh, other states. Yeah, there'd be people from Iowa, of course, Oklahoma, Texas, Colorado, yeah, Kansas. Uh, I am excited this year for Art in the Park because it'll be my first time helping out, and I'm, I've never been, so I'm just excited to go see. Last year we took a lot of stuff, and then we just like sell our stuff. So like stuff like that we make. It's a chance for artists to show their stuff to people, and for people to talk to artists. Art in the Park was a hit this year. If you missed out, you can go see Callie's Art Club Showcase on December 1st at 6.30 p.m. Man, Art in the Park looked like a blast. Cowley County has loads of events to offer. I know, me and Luke recently went to the Bluegrass Festival and we had a great time getting tons of great footage. Michaela and some students went to see and visit the Bluegrass Festival in Winfield, Kansas to visit and see the culture there. She went and talked to some people like the Byron Berlin Band. We have, our, we have our own festival in, in Guthrie called the uh, Oklahoma International Bluegrass Festival. It's very similar to Winfield on a sm little bit smaller scale. Most laid back, cool festivals in this area. Wow. That's why a lot of people from here will go there because it's so relaxed and the music is great. Cause we, it's a, it, it's a, you know, a, uh, uh, international bluegrass. Now we can't get all the international bands in like we usually get the Japanese bluegrass band. We get, but during COVID, we can't get those bands in. If you would like to see them, they will be in Guthrie, Oklahoma, playing at least twice a month in the following months. Other places to see famous artists would be The Baby and Friends in Wichita, November 6th, Willie Nelson at Tulsa, November 5th, and many more events and venues around here to find for yourself. That seemed like one heck of an event. It was. I learned so much from it. There was always so much culture to be taught at different festivals. The end of October is not only for tricks or treats, it's also a way for people to celebrate their cultures. But Day of the Dead is really more of a cultural and spiritual festival. Um, 
positive aspects of remembering loved ones who have passed. It would be more similar to Memorial Day here in the U.S. Um, it also is connected with All Saints Day because it does occur on November 1st and 2nd. For example, people will set up altars to their family and friends who are deceased and they will make sure that the altars have all of the things that the person loved while they're alive. So they'll have their beverages and the foods um, and they include photos of family members, um, flowers, the, um, the orange, mar the orange um, marigold is a very common flower, the simposuchi. And so you see those and, and they decorate, they decorate with, um, oh, I think the calaveras, the sugar skulls, pan de muerto, the bread of the dead. You'll see papel picado, which is the cut paper pieces. And so views of the afterlife are highly varied. You find a lot of times the types of objects and clothing that someone is buried in, um, depending on uh, your cultural beliefs might be what they're actually wearing or using in the afterlife. And so, um, I think one of the more interesting ideas is the the idea of ancestor worship, a position or place where um, they can oversee and, and protect a particular area. And so, while it's easy to think of those types of traditions as ancient, it, the, the reality is there are cultures that still practice those types of traditions today. Use this October to find out about more cultures surrounding you. It is pretty incredible just how many cultures are represented here at Cowley. Many cultures are so spiritual too. It makes me feel honored that I was able to speak with someone who does Reiki sessions at such a reasonable price. Reiki is a form of therapeutic touch that originated in Japan. What Reiki is, is a means of harnessing the life force energy that exists all around us and then bringing it through our bodies and then healing uh, through our hands. Right. Um, what it's most well known for is kind of cutting through all of the static in our lives every day and um, helping us to find that place of peace in which we can calm down and relax. It can help you with anything from the common cold to cancer, but it has warranted enough attention that the top three uh, hospitals here in the United States for cancer all offer Reiki. With their cancer patients, it's helped them with the healing process, especially when they're going through chemotherapy. But it also helps them to deal with a lot of the, well, the trauma of having cancer and helping them to come to terms with it as well. We also talked to Hui Vaz on how to better our spiritual health through yoga. Yoga pretty much is a practice that helps you to get centered. Right? You know, you connect your, uh, how do you say, your spiritual being with your physical being. You know, people think about yoga as a physical practice, but it's actually using the physical to connect to yourself, you know. So it's pretty much connecting to your inner self. I think uh, if you don't have any instructor with you, what I would tell you to do is to do breathing exercises, which is called pranayama. It's pretty much bringing uh, all the prana. But most importantly, yoga is for you to disconnect from the outside and to connect with your inner self and be present. Please remember that these alternative healing methods are used in correlation with standard Western medication. I'm so glad Reiki is becoming popularized. Hopefully we can see it in pop culture one day. Pop culture these days has a lot of influence on fashion trends, but not everyone can afford the latest styles and trends. Dressing up is just one way we can express ourselves. Yeah, it is. You know what another way you can express yourself is? Mm -hmm. Getting your hair done here at the cosmetology department on campus. I spoke to Paige Winslow and got some insight about what they have coming for us this October. As fall sets in, fall colors are coming into full swing. This means you may be wanting to dye your hair or get a mani or pedi with seasonal colors. Or maybe you're just in need of a trim or facial. Well, good news for you, our cosmetology center opens this October. You come here, it's at a discounted price and you get basically the same look and you're getting all the massage and the, you know, mask and all that stuff. We offer a 15% discount uh, to our services if you're a student at Cali and for what you're paying and what you're receiving, like 
it's it's a good deal. So we are a full service salon. So we do essentially everything that you can go into a salon and get done: um, hair color, cutting, waxing, um, manicuring, pedicuring, facials, microderm. We do all of um, the services that are offered in a full service salon, but we do them at a discounted price. It's completely supervised by myself or Delaine Dale, our clinic floor manager. We do do walk-ins, so class size limits us on how many walk-ins we can do. This year we have a very large class, and so walk-ins we definitely will be able to take. This year. So we do Tuesday through Friday from noon to five is our clinic floor hours, um, and then we do six Saturdays out of the year. So um, those are pre-scheduled, and we put those on our social media pages so when we will be having. To make sure we're gonna make sure that you leave with a salon quality service. Hopefully, you got some more information about what our cosmetology center offers. Be sure to schedule your appointment with them starting in October. The cosmetology department offers all types of services, so if you need a fresh cut for your upcoming game, they've got you covered. Thank you for tuning in. That's all we have for this edition. Make sure to follow our social media. See you next time.